I'm not gonna lie, I was kind of falling for her. And I was like, oh, my heart, no, why? She looked like a model, she was mwah, beautiful. <laughs> so then my heart was like fully broken. <laughs> Hi sweeties, welcome back to the channel and if you're new here, hi, I'm Julia and this is gonna be a very gay story time <laughs> like most of my story times and honestly, the other day when I was remembering this story I was like, I cannot believe I have not told this story on YouTube yet because it's, it's juicy, it's a good one <laughs> Honestly, story times are one of my favorite types of videos to film, but I haven't done one in a while because I was like, I don't really have anything that interesting to tell that wouldn't like ruin someone's life or something. So, <laughs> so I hadn't filmed a story time in a while, but the other day I remember this story and I was like, oh my god, the world needs to know. <laughs> so this is a story about when I dated a woman for a little while, a few years ago before I met my wife. But before we start, please subscribe and activate the notifications so you know whenever I post a new video. It also makes me really happy whenever someone new subscribes. So like, he just make my day and, and click on the little subscribe button pretty please. Also, you can follow me on Patreon for one extra video a week and you can follow me on Instagram for amazing pictures. They're totally gonna change your life. And you can also please give us a thumbs up because it really helps the channel. Okay, so uh, I am really feeling the lesbian vibes with this open sh Pokemon shirt <laughs> over a tank top. I, I, I am feeling it. So, once upon a time, many years ago, before I met my darling wife, I used to go on dating websites a lot. I don't even know if Tinder was a thing back then, or if it was like Diva, or you know, one of the lesbian websites. And I was scrolling through that, as you do, and I, actually, I'm sure it wasn't Tinder, because it was one of the websites where you can actually click on the person and actually message them without having matched. It was one of those. So I saw this woman and uh, she was uh, stunning. <laughs> she was from Vietnam and she had beautiful, long, silky hair. She was just... She looked like a model. She was mwah, beautiful. <laughs> and her profile was amazing. It was like, you know when you read someone's profile and you can tell they're very clever, very smart. It was like super well written. And I, I love that, you know, if you've seen me describe me meeting my wife, you know, because I met her on Tinder and her profile was just like nice and well written. And I think that's very sexy when people like write well and when they're intelligent i like that so <laughs> so her profile was like really nice and well written and uh, she sounded smart and i was like oh my god and she's beautiful too and uh, i i messaged her <laughs> and i think i was pretty forward not in a sexy way but like uh, i was pretty direct i said something like I really like your profile, you seem very interesting. Would you like to go out for lunch? And I said lunch instead of like dinner or drinks because I didn't want to be too like, I want your body. <laughs> and to my surprise, I mean, who am I kidding? I wasn't surprised. <laughs> no, Beverly, you can't. You can't come over now. Okay, come here, little dog. Hello, hello. New baby dog. So what was I even saying? Oh yeah, so she answered pretty soon saying, oh yes, lunch sounds great, when are you free, where would you like to go, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh, so excited about it. I was really like, oh my God, I can't believe this is actually happening. I was very excited because I thought she was like the bee's knees. <laughs> Oh my god, does anyone even say that anymore? <laughs> so, you know when you haven't met someone and you don't even know them that well or anything, but in your head <laughs> you're already imagining like a whole romantic story. I mean, it's not a good thing to do to kind of like imagine a person and imagine things before you've even met. It's a recipe for getting your heart broken, but that's what happened. I was already like, oh my god, Oh, and it's gonna be amazing and this is gonna happen and this is gonna happen like in my head like a 
idiot. <laughs> so it was finally the day I was gonna meet this mystery woman and uh, I was like dressed up. I'm sure I was like overdressed as hell with like full makeup and like a nighttime outfit even though we were meeting for lunch. So we met and uh, instantly I was like oh my god she's gorgeous. She's even more beautiful in person and uh, I love her voice and she smells amazing and she sounded so intelligent and the things she talked about were so interesting. I was like very into her straight away. So we sat down and we started having lunch and drinks and uh, she was just so cool. <laughs> she was like a fine arts major type of thing. I'm not sure exactly what her job was, but it was something artistic like that, which I love. So, you know, I was pretty impressed. She was like pretty cool. And we started talking about where she was from and where I was from, blah, blah, blah. Now, pay attention to this detail because it's going to be relevant. So, when I said I'm from Brazil and I speak Portuguese, she said, oh wow, I actually speak Spanish. So, I understand a little bit of Portuguese. I know it's, a, you know, a different language, but it's it can be similar. So, sometimes I understand little bits of Portuguese. And I was like, whoa, that's so cool, because you're from Vietnam, it's so far away, and uh, you speak Spanish. That's wonderful. How did you learn Spanish? That's awesome. Was it like at school? Did you take Spanish? How, how did that happen? You're so cool. And uh, she said, oh, it was from living with a Spanish woman. And uh, I thought, oh, okay, cool. She had a Spanish ex. Awesome. <laughs> And we just carried on talking and it was fabulous. And we didn't kiss or anything on that first date, but it was pretty obvious that we were into each other. You know, we were looking at each other and uh, we kind of like held hands a little bit and we were close and you, you could tell we fancied each other. And then at the end of the date, she said something like, oh, I would like to see you again or something of the sort. And I was like, oh yeah, for sure, for sure. So after that, we started messaging more often and we would go on dates sometimes and and uh, then, you know, we kissed and everything and it was lovely. And for a month or two, we went on a few dates and it was always nice. We didn't at any moment say we were in a relationship and we didn't discuss anything like that. But I didn't think anything of it. I thought it was just too soon for that because we had just met and uh, I was just enjoying it and finding it lovely and um, I'm not gonna lie, I was kind of falling for her because she was just so sweet and uh, she treated me so nicely and I, I, I thought she was awesome. <laughs> but then I was talking to my mom about her because every time I would go on a date with her I would like call my mom after and tell her all about it because I'm lame as <laughs> So I was talking to my mom about this, this girl. Let, let's give her a name. Heather. <laughs> Heather. I don't know why Heather. It doesn't sound like her name at all. So I was talking to my mom about Heather and I was like, oh, she's so cute. She's this, she's that, da, da, da. And my mom, oh my god, my mom, she knows her stuff. <laughs> she's not <laughs> an idiot like me. She said, but has Heather asked you at all, like whether or not you have a girlfriend or anything, if you're single? And I said, well, no, she hasn't asked me, but I didn't think she would because we met on a dating website, right? We wouldn't be on a dating website if we weren't single. I didn't ask her either because I kind of like just assumed she would be single because she was on a dating website. <laughs> Th this is actually not the first time I make this mistake. You know, I expect good things from people usually, so... Anyway, I said to my mom, I didn't think that was a big deal because I thought it was obvious. But my mom said to me that she thinks that even if it's obvious, if someone is interested, they will usually say something about it. Even if they think they already know the answer, they will comment something or make some remark or whatever. And uh, she didn't, so my mom thought it was suspicious. Well, she didn't just think it was suspicious, she was full on like, I, I think she has someone else. And I was like, oh, my heart, no! Why? I mean, I, there was no reason for me to feel anything because I had just pretty much just met the person, but I was like, no, please don't let it be true. It's so upsetting. So I decided to do the normal thing that any normal, healthy person would do in that situation, which is 
not to ask the girl, but to look through everything that she's ever posted on social media like a f***ing cycle. <laughs> so I was looking through this woman's Instagram and she didn't have many pictures at all. And I'm so used to most people having like their whole lives out on social media and because I'm like that, I, I post so much on social media, obviously. So I was like, oh my god, this girl is mysterious as heck. There's nothing to be found on her social media. There were maybe like 10 posts, not even that. I didn't have much to work with. But then I had the brilliant idea because I'm a mother detective and also very sad. <laughs> I decided to look through everyone this woman followed on Instagram. Oh my god, I would like to think I would never do shit like that nowadays. I would like to think that like uh, I am busier and I have a life. But that's what I did. Don't judge me. I, I was very sad. So I literally went through everybody she followed. And, you know, there were a lot of celebrities, some random stuff. You know, I was going through, not finding anything interesting. When I came across a profile of a Spanish woman. Now, you remember, you remember, right? She said she used to live with a Spanish woman. So I was like, oh my god, do you think that's her ex? I think that might be her ex, because she's Spanish. Uh, or she might be like a friend of her exes. I was like, oh my god, the, the, oh, that's juicy. So I clicked on her profile. Well, no, I clicked on her profile first, because that's how I found out she was Spanish. I think it said something about being a Spanish woman living in London. And this Spanish woman, let's give her a name. Luna. Oh, I love this name. Uh, <laughs> Luna. So I looked through Luna's profile. She seemed nice, but she also didn't have that many photos. And I was like, what's wrong with people? I'm, I'm trying to stalk you. Why aren't you posting? <laughs> oh, psycho. So I wasn't really finding anything out about Luna. There weren't any like personal posts or anything that indicated that she was Heather's ex until I've noticed that Heather had liked every single post that Luna had posted, which weren't that many, but she liked every single one of them. Huh. So that rang some alarm bells for me because even if you're friends with someone, do you really like all of their posts? Maybe you do. Do I like all of my friends' posts? I don't know, it, it wasn't like a huge sign, but my intuition was telling me there was something there. So I looked at the dates of when the posts were posted and they were all from a few years ago. So I was like, okay, if this was her ex, she liked the posts a while ago, so it, it is just an ex. Whatever, who cares? So I relaxed, I thought, oh, okay, so no worries, I looked through her social media, didn't find anything, just this posts from a Spanish woman that she liked a few years ago, but that makes sense because she had a Spanish ex a few years ago, so... Who cares? Whatever. Carried on going on dates with this girl and it was all lovely and cute and hoo hoo hoo. Amazing. But, you know, time went by, we went on more dates and stuff and still nothing was mentioned about relationships or being single or whatever. Hey, this is editing Julia straight from the future and I forgot to tell you about a very important red flag. So, apart from her not mentioning anything about whether or not she had a girlfriend or whether or not I had a girlfriend, she would always come over to my place, but I would never go over to hers. Never. She would never invite me. And I wouldn't invite myself because I was shy. But I started getting suspicious about that too. I was like, why am I always inviting her to come over? But I have no idea where she lives. I haven't met anyone that knows her. Strange. So I thought, you know, let me go back to her social media. <laughs> I was so sick. Why didn't I just ask like a normal person? So I still had a feeling about Luna, the Spanish woman. So I decided to look up some of Luna's other social media because I didn't find anything that relevant on her Instagram, just the old posts that had been liked. So I decided to look her up on Facebook. So 
I typed in her name on Facebook, like the little creep that, that I am, and uh, found her profile and there was nothing there as well, just, you know, the, the odd one or two pictures, no relationship status, nothing that could give me any relevant information. However, I could see photos that other people had posted but tagged Luna on. That's when I found a photo of Luna that was posted in someone's profile that had the same surname as Heather. <laughs> Does that make sense? So I clicked on that photo and I realized that it belonged to this whole album of photos that someone from Heather's family had posted years ago and they were photos from a wedding. So I looked through the photos and uh, Heather was there and Luna was there. So they both attended this family wedding together. So clearly they were a couple because you don't just invite random people to a family wedding, you go with your partner. So I was like, okay, so that's been confirmed. Luna was definitely Heather's girlfriend. But those photos were really old from a few years before that time. So I was like, oh, okay, whatever, no big deal. That just confirms my suspicions that this was her Spanish ex. And that's good, because it means she told a true story. She said she had a Spanish ex, and she does. And uh, here are the photos to prove it. <laughs> But I was still not convinced 100% that that was it because it was just strange, right? That she didn't ask me to go to her house or anything like that. So I decided to ask her? No. <laughs> I decided to go back to Heather's Instagram and have another look-see. Just, just in case I missed something. Psycho. So I went back to Heather's Instagram and I decided to look through the comments on her few posts to see if there was anything from Luna. I just looked through the comments and it was pretty quick because Heather didn't have that many photos and she didn't have that many comments. So it was just a pretty quick search and I didn't find anything. However, however, I noticed that Luna had also liked all of Heather's photos. And that would be okay, right? Because they were a couple, they always liked each other's photos. Normal. Remember I said Luna's posts were quite old and the photos of them at the wedding on Facebook were also quite old, so, you know, could be an ex. However, <laughs> and that's when my heart broke, I noticed that some of Heather's posts were recent. They were from that year and those recent posts had also all been liked by Luna. And that's when I realized they were still together. If you broke up with someone, you might still be friends, but you're not gonna like every single post from that person after you broke up. So I was like, okay, I'm pretty sure they are still together. And although I hadn't been seeing Heather for that long, I'll admit I was pretty upset. <laughs> I mean, I didn't really have maybe the right to be upset because we weren't in a relationship and uh, it was still like early days, but I, I was kind of upset. <laughs> well, that's what I get for not asking, I guess. Hey, this is Editing Julia, straight from the future again. And uh, I can't believe I forgot to tell the most dramatic part of the story. Okay, so a couple of days after I made that discovery <laughs> on Instagram, I went on another date with Heather because I thought, you know, maybe it's just me being crazy and overthinking things. Maybe everything is just fine. So I went on another date with Heather and um, as soon as I saw her, to be honest, I completely forgot about everything. I was like, oh, I'm sure it's fine. She's so sweet. She's so lovely. I'm sure she doesn't have a girlfriend and I really didn't think too much about it because I was so like in the moment and everything and it was lovely. So we went about our date, but then at some point during the date, Heather decided to show me some funny cat videos on her phone. And there we were watching funny cat videos, la la la, all cute. When a notification pops up on Heather's phone while we're watching the cat video, and whose name is on the notification? Luna. And not just Luna, Luna's whole full name. Ah! Oh! 
and also it happened too fast i didn't actually read the whole thing but i did get the sense they was like a sweet little message from luna <laughs> I didn't know whether to be like really upset because obviously my suspicions had been confirmed or to be really proud because I was a very good f***ing detective because before that happened I already knew like her full name what she did where she lived <laughs> no I shouldn't have been proud of that like I was a creep <laughs> but it was out of insecurity not out of you know wanting to be creepy yeah that happened so then I was sure but I wanted to believe still still after that I wanted to believe that maybe they were just exes who were best friends so okay let's get back to past Julia so she can finish telling the story. <laughs> I still had a little bit of hope that maybe I was just reading too much into things and that maybe it was just a coincidence and maybe they were just really friendly exes. So I went on one more date with Heather and uh, during that date I asked her something like oh so when am I gonna see your house when you know when are you gonna invite me over so, something of the sort and uh, she said oh it's a little bit complicated for me to have people over <laughs> So then my heart was like fully f***ing broken. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't that big of a deal really because I, yeah, I didn't know her that well and it was like a pretty lighthearted thing but still, like, I'm not gonna lie and say I didn't care. I was like pretty upset. <laughs> so then I told her that we should stop seeing each other because I was looking for something different. I didn't full on say, I think you have a girlfriend, I'm gonna stop seeing you because I didn't want her to know I <laughs> pretty much stalked her social media to a very extreme degree. <laughs> but I think she got the idea because it was right after she said her house was complicated which is basically saying she has someone and I can't go there and then that was it I never saw Heather ever again and it was sad for a, a couple of weeks but then I got over it because who cares <laughs> so moral of the story I always like for y'all to learn something from my mistakes when I tell the story times. The moral of the story is that if you're seeing someone, you should always ask about their situation unless you're, you, you know, unless you really don't care and you just want to have a good time and whatever, but you should always ask. You should never just assume someone is single because they're not talking about it. Well, especially if they're not talking about it, you shouldn't just assume. And most importantly, I think that's the real moral of the story, you shouldn't go digging through someone's social media, you should just be upfront with them and ask things if you want to know things, because it's just sad. <laughs> and it takes a lot of time and effort and it's, it's just sad. Don't do that. <laughs> oh my god, I was so lame and embarrassing. <laughs> I want to know in the comments if anything like this has ever happened to you, honestly. Just tell me your story. I don't care if it's a long ass comment. I'm gonna read it. That's gonna be it for today. I hope this video made you smile. Thank you so much for watching and have a very, very lovely day. Mwah! <laughs>